This is Access Tech Live. So Apple announced three updates really across uh, its ranges of uh, iPhone, Apple Watch and AirPods uh, line. Of course, some other updates as well. Let's break into all of this and get some detail and thoughts from Carrie Morales, also known as Carry On Accessibility, uh, blind content creator on YouTube. Good to have you here on Access Tech Live, Carrie. Thanks, Stephen. I'm excited to be here. Um, I was actually really excited about this Apple event this year. I especially love the new colors, but my favorite has to be the new camera control buttons. What about you? I, I love the camera control wow. as well. It's Mark, by the way, here. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay. I, I'm curious to get hands on and I'm curious to know how it works with accessibility because a lot of people have been asking um, what you can customize on it and actually use it for. But what, what about it strikes you as the interesting part? Is it just having that at your fingertip, Carrie? I think having that at your fingertips, being able to integrate that into different apps, imagine being able to control things like Be My Eyes or the magnifier or a detection mode on the iPhone, or even just can you do other shortcuts with voiceover or with Zoom? I think that it would be amazing to see what Apple does maybe when it comes out or even in the future and how other third-party app makers will use this. And we do kind of know that that is possible, right? Because although they talked about the camera control being the main reason for that button existing, they also talked about visual intelligence being a reason for existing. So that tells you it can do more than one thing. Uh, anything else about the new iPhones? Because, I mean, I, I know colors are a big deal to you. So, you know, I, I'm guessing that the, the pink color, I don't want to assume, but, you know, I, I know that we, we, you've been on Double Tap with us before, but I can say this with a relative amount of authority. Uh, you're going to be looking forward to the pink uh, iPhone 16, I'm guessing. Absolutely. I love the pink version, but I think this time I will be pre-ordering the uh, iPhone 16 Pro Max, and I think I'm going to get teal just for fun oh. because I got a pink Pixel 9 Pro, so it's time to get a different color. Interesting. Okay, <laughs> let's go with that. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's interesting that you brought up the third-party developers using this camera control button, and I think the biggest takeaway I get from this Apple event, obviously the, the hearing aid feature of the AirPods Pro 2 is cool, Ooh, and it's yeah. nice to see upgrades across the board, but it's about the software, right? It's really just about the software experience that, it, honestly, I, I couldn't care less about the performance of some of these devices because it, it's my iPhone 15 Pro is just perfectly fine. Even the 14s are, are I think, perfectly fine. You know, is, am I on the same, are we on the same page here when it comes to software is really what's making these things stand out and, and different from each other? Absolutely. I am really looking forward to the whole Apple intelligence. Props to them, by the way, for rebranding AI. I love that. Um, but I <laughs> am really looking forward to how it stacks up compared to Gemini, which is the Android Google version. And from what I've heard from the betas, people are actually really enjoying Siri and the new Siri, which I mean, let's be honest here, anything is better than the old Siri. <laughs> so yeah. I think that as it knows you and has access to all your personal information, it can better help. But I'm also really excited about this kind of Google Lens-like experience, being able to press that camera button for visual intelligence and then just pointing it at something. Are we going to be able to use it like the Be My Eyes and Be My AI and other things like that? Are we going to be able to ask it different questions about our environment, especially as somebody who's blind or low vision? That, to me, it ha could be a really big opportunity. There are a lot of cool new features coming in. As, as you say, Mark, you know, it's about the, the software. Let's be honest about it. There's tons of new features yeah. coming in iOS 18, especially for accessibility. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about eye tracking, for example, which is a brand new feature coming to uh, iOS and iPadOS. And that is going to be a tremendous feature for people with uh, motor impairments. Uh, for people with uh, hearing loss or who are deaf, uh, they can enjoy music with music haptics, which seems like a really cool, fun feature, right? Uh, and that's a great thing. It's a brilliant thing to bring in, something we can, you know, allows everybody to take part in the fun. It doesn't have to always be a medical thing. Uh, what else are you aware of that's coming up in iOS 18, Carrier, that, that really stands out for you in terms of making a difference to accessibility? I think that just having that Apple intelligence, but aside from that, um, 
I just really want to see how it integrates with other apps and having control, more control over your phone and not just being able to have this chat GPT like experience, but being able to control other apps. That's what's more exciting for me. But I don't know. I'll have to see what they come up with as uh, for specific accessibility related features. Um, that's what's most exciting for me, really. Um, what about you? You know, I was going into this. I was wondering how they were going to combat and compare themselves to certain features on the Pixel, like uh, Circle to Search, you know? And this is something mm -hmm. that Google announced what, I mean, almost six, seven months ago, where, you know, you press and hold kind of that home button area, and you can circle anything on your screen to search it. Now, Apple demonstrated this with the guy walking through San Francisco, you know, pointing it at a restaurant and, and holding that button for a second, that new camera control button, and it did the same thing. And I, I'm what struck me interesting to both of you, and, you know, either you can chime in on this, was that not only did they achieve the same thing in terms of being able to just search for anything or, or identify anything that's on your screen, but you didn't have to worry about circling anything. They made it a completely hands-free experience. Now, yes, I know there's limitations there. You can't circle a specific area on your screen, but I can you know go hold it up against my dog and say, what kind of dog is this? And I thought that was an interesting way to one-up the competition in a feature that I wasn't sure how they were going to even approach. I think it's very interesting how on the pixels, you can circle what's on your screen, like you mentioned, but on the Apple iPhones, you can just take a picture of what's actually real in front of you. And you can kind of achieve the same thing by actively taking a picture with Gemini. You can send Gemini a picture and you can use something like Google Lens, but it seems a lot easier to just have that button and send it straight away to Siri. So I think that it's going to be really interesting to see where people actually use AI and what actually day-to-day -day uses and utility they can find. Yeah, although I've got to say, the idea of walking up to a dog, I imagine attached to an owner in some way and pointing your phone at a dog and, and taking the picture of the dog and then asking a phone, what kind of dog is this? I mean, couldn't you just ask the owner i mean am i missing something here are we are we completely cutting ourselves off from other people in society can we just can we just talk to each other no we could, Stephen. That. i don't think we want don't. to anymore want to, yeah. <laughs> you know with all these announcements and you know that you know they always end this off with the price tag and availability and it brings up the question of affordability and that's the question we threw out on social media which is are these devices becoming too expensive? And this is a conversation that I think we'll be having for a long time because, you know, manufacturers price their products a certain way and, and hope that people do it. And a lot of people do buy it. But it almost, you know, begs the question, and, and, and I want to throw this out to you before we take a quick break, Carrie, because we're going to dive into this even deeper with with, um, with uh, Chad Lehman as well, is, you know, you're a single mom. Uh, you, you've got a lot of stuff on your plate. Um, you know, are, are these things pricing themselves out of range for the average person. What's your take on that? I think absolutely, yes. Companies just keep trying to slowly, very slowly increase the price every single year. And then there's the lowest tier models have less storage and you have, feel like you have to go and get the upgraded one. And then next year, there's a new one. You need to buy that new one because it has new features and a better hardware. And it's just every year it just feels like it's slowly increasing and increasing and the worst part is the trade-in values are decreasing or at least that's how it yeah. feels like for me yeah it definitely feels that way hold that thought we're going to take a quick break coming up here on access tech live we're going to bring in another guest to kind of make a roundtable discussion here tad lehman is from the neil squire society and we're going to get his opinion as well because he works around this a lot this is access tech live we'll be right back there's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.